If you're looking to save money on a UK caravanning or camping holiday and also want to enjoy views like this, then in this video in just 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how you can potentially save hundreds of pounds on your summer holidays. Hi, it's Dave T here. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a lesser known type of UK campsite, which is often much less expensive, but often overlooked even by seasoned campers and caravanners. Also, by the way, when I'm talking about caravans in this video, I'm referring to touring or towed caravans. So if you're interested in static caravan holidays, then this video is probably not for you. Now, most people will be aware of commercial sites, which are privately owned and managed and have a broad range of prices and facilities. They usually have at least 20 or so pitches, and some of them can be very large. There are also sites run by the two main UK camping clubs. The Camping and Caravanning Club, which has just under 100 sites, and the Caravan and Motorhome Club, with 150 sites. Their sites tend to be very consistent in both standards and the facilities they offer. Some, but not all of their sites, require you to be a member to use them. The Caravan and Motorhome Club, as its name suggests, does not accept tents. The less well-known category, and the one I'm going to focus on, are certificated sites. These are privately owned small sites which are regulated by the Caravan and Motorhome Club and the Camping and Caravanning Club respectively. It's important to note that they are not owned or operated by either club, but merely regulated. This system came about as sort of a workaround for planning law, for which if you're interested, here is a brief and more, le more or less accurate history lesson. Both clubs were founded just over 100 years ago and at that time were very much clubs. In those happy days, campers in their tents or caravans could simply turn up and ask any landowner if they could camp on their land. There was no regulation and everyone was happy. Now, in the early 60s, the Town and Country Planning Act was brought in to regulate building construction and the use of land. Amongst other things, this included regulating the use of caravans as alternatives to houses and it also brought in the requirement for planning permission to build or run campsites. Obviously the campers and caravanners, usually club members, that had been informally camping on farms etc were not particularly happy about this. So a provision was added to the act for landowners to allow camping on their land but the number of pitches was limited and they must provide essential facilities. To avoid local councils having to regulate them, this task was given to the two main clubs and so certificated locations were regulated by the caravan club and certificated sites were created and regulated by the camping club. Because of this oddity in which CL and CS sites came about, they can only be used by members of the respective club. That means that if you want to use CS or CL sites, then you do need to join one of the clubs and pay the annual membership fee, which is £59 for the caravan club and £45 for the camping club. If you plan to camp in a tent, then your choice is limited to joining the camping and caravanning club and have the choice of just under 1,200 CS sites. Caravan and motorhome club users can join either or both clubs and so have access to over 2,200 CL sites as well as the CS sites. In terms of pricing, commercial and club sites are similar, ranging from about £24 per night for two people in the off-season, all the way up to £45 for two people in the height of summer on a basic pitch. CL and CS sites are much less, where electric hookup pitches can range anywhere from £15 to £35 per night, usually regardless of the number of adults. That means that for a 14-night holiday in August, staying at a CL or CS site could save you as much as £250 and possibly more. There are some CL and CS sites which are less than £10 a night, though most of the very low-cost sites do not have electric hookup. So, if you've ever been camping or caravanning before, then you're almost certainly familiar with what most commercial and club sites look like. Typically, they are sizable fields with row upon row of pitches, central toilet and washroom block, and filled, especially in the summer, with hundreds of campers. And if you thought all campsites were like that, then you'll be amazed at the difference and variety of CL sites. The most obvious difference is that CL and CS sites are smaller and limited to five pitches. Often the pitch restriction is purely a legal limit and the sites have space to accommodate far more vans, so they are often much more spacious pitches. The sites can be located in an extraordinary range of places, by lakes or on islands, in rolling countryside or woodland, on country estates, farms or even churchyards. It always surprises me that many club members have never tried a CL or CS site, and some are not even aware that they exist. There is a bit of a misunderstanding that these smaller sites are all very basic, and a lot of members are intimidated by this. It may surprise you to learn that some CL or CS sites actually have more facilities than some of the main club sites. 
So let's have a rundown on what CL and CS sites are actually like. According to the Planning Act under which they are regulated, all CL and CS sites must have the essential facilities. So they will always have a supply of fresh drinking water, a means of emptying chemical toilets and bins for disposing of rubbish. Contrary to popular belief, just over half of these sites actually have electric hookup. A lot of CLs and CSs also have toilets and or showers. Often it will only be one, but remember the facilities that only have to be shared by the occupants of five pitches. They can be fairly basic, but often they are actually quite modern and more like home bathrooms. If you need hard standings, then don't panic as about half of CL sites have at least some. Some CL sites and CSs now even have fully serviced pitches with mains power, water supply and grey water drainage on pitch. Because CLs and CSs are completely independent, there is a huge variety in the other facilities they offer. These can be anything from Wi-Fi to washing machines to games rooms or even private bathrooms per pitch. If you have children, then be aware that some CLs and CSs, about 10%, are adult only. Now, if you don't have kids, you may consider that to be an advantage. On the subject of children, it's worth noting that the majority of people that use CLs and CSs tend not to have children. And of course, there are only five pitches on site. This means that there will often not be other children to play with. The flip side of this is that these sites tend to be in locations which are more interesting for children to explore. Many sites are deep in the countryside or on working farms, which can be great experiences for children, but of course safety should always be considered before letting younger children roam too freely. Most CLs and CSs tend to be on farms or small holdings. They are often also in more rural settings and this means that views from the sites are generally nicer and because of the five pitch maximum, often you will get a spectacular view right from your van or tent window. There are lots of advantages to staying at CL and CS sites, the most obvious which is probably cost. The vast majority of CLs and CSs charge between £20 and £30 per night, even in August. A lot of them charge a lot less than £20 and few of them charge more than £35. Generally, there aren't many additional charges, but when there are, they're usually only a few pounds extra per night. But it's not just about price. With more than 10 times the number of sites, they are far more widely spread throughout the country than club sites. This means that if you want a site that's near to a particular location, such as a good walking route or tourist attraction, then you are far more likely to find a CL or CS nearby. With a limit of five vans, the atmosphere is generally more relaxed and facilities and views aren't being shared with dozens or hundreds of others. Also, they are frequently not fully booked. We have often stayed for several nights where we have had the entire site to ourselves. The sites are almost always quieter, more secluded and closer to nature and wildlife. And their locations mean that you are often treated to spectacular scenery and views right from the pitches. With many sites based on working farms, there's often farm animals and interesting work going on. If you decide to stay at a CL site for more than a few nights where there's no electric hookup, then you may want to invest in a solar panel. A basic setup would likely pay for itself after a few trips, and if you want more information, then check out my off-grid power series that I'll link in the description. Or you can find loads of helpful advice on the Camog Facebook group. Many CL and CS sites use septic tanks that can be damaged by normal blue toilet chemicals. So you better be on the safe side and also better for the environment, grab a bottle of two of green toilet fluid, which then works in any septic tank. CL and CS sites tend to be a bit off the beaten track. So at least a car ride from local shops. Bear that in mind and take at least some basic provisions with you. Finding a CL or CS site is easy to do. Both clubs produce maps showing all of the site locations, as well as a book which is updated every few years containing details of all club and CL and CS sites. But by far the simplest method of finding a CL or CS site is to use the related club's website. You can search by location and facilities required or use an interactive map. Some sites have an online booking systems and websites, but with most of them you will need to either email or phone to book. If you are looking for a CL site at short notice, then CL Booking is a website and app that allows you to search for sites. But importantly, you can also specify the dates that you require and it will show those with availability and allow you to contact the owner directly through the website. At the moment, CL Booking does not include all CL sites, but it is growing fast and is the only way to see which sites have availability. I hope you found this video interesting or useful and it encourages you to try CL or CS sites. I have a collection of videos of the CLs we have visited, which I'll link at the end of this video if you'd like to see just some of the variety of CLs on offer. 
If you have enjoyed watching, then please do hit that like button. And if you're interested in seeing other videos that I make, then please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos. But most of all, thanks for watching.